ask you the obvious question. How does this game change without Kawhi Leonard available? Yeah, I mean, obviously your, you know, sympathies and, and hope and wish him a, a, a speedy recovery. I know, you know, obviously the competitive component, but the, the personal component, um, you know, always trumps that. So hopefully – He'll get better quickly, and and it won't be anything that's severe for him. Um, as far as how it impacts the series, you know, I, I think there, there's obviously things that that he does that are unique. You know, we've been through that um, with Mike, and some of the things that that he does for our team that you have to adjust to. Um, you know, and and they'll make those same adjustments whether it's. Um, you know, obviously minutes, personnel, matchups, who they play. Um, there, there are other things, you know, I think PG um, at certain times in the game, you know, as you review the game, um, has already been unbelievably aggressive. And that's something that we've talked about and, and we need to address. And, and I think, um, you know, there's a number of ways that, that we can try to do that. But now you, you look at someone like Reggie Jackson, um, and the windows that he's had, you know, at certain points in the series where, where he's been, um, he's really scored the ball. Um, you know, obviously Morris as well. Um, so their usage, you know, likely goes up and um, some of who they play and, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, you, you, you have to try to prepare for all those things in advance as, as much as, as possible. You know, go back and look at some of the games this year where, um, where Kawhi hasn't played and, and look at, you know, the way that they, you know, substituted and the way they've played and, and, and those types of things that give you a little bit of color. Um, but, you know, no one isolates at the nail better in the world than he does. Um, so there's obviously some things like that. Um, his post-ups, he was playmaking out of the post and then obviously defensively. So, you know, anytime you lose a player like that, it impacts the series. And as I said, it's, you know, but teams, teams respond and, um, you know, they'll respond, you know, so I, I think, you know, our guys know that um, the same way, you know, we, we've had to do that and need to continue to do it. It's, you know, I think everybody on this level, this time of year is understands that there's a, there's a next man up mentality and they're a deep team and they're a talented team. So um, there's certainly enough um, offensive, you know, talent out there that they can score the ball. And we have to, we have to defend so that we can get out and run and get, get some, you know, get some cleaner looks and be more efficient offensively. Cam Buford, LA News Observer. Greetings from the Pacific Northwest, Coach. I want to ask okay. you, uh, obviously you've dealt with the injuries and there's about what, eight or nine All-Stars, NBA All-Stars that are out or have missed time during this NBA playoffs. Would you attribute, what would you attribute that to? And do you give it cause to the shortened off season? You know, I, I it, it's really difficult for me to speculate, you know, on that, it, you know, anytime. You know, some of those things you, you just you can't control. And, and I think, you know, across the league, you know, everybody does their best to to mitigate on whatever level that's possible. Um, but it's hard for me to comment on that with, you know, with any real credibility. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Ben Anderson, KSLSports.com. Quinn, yesterday you talked a lot about adjustments and then, of course, the major change without having Kawhi. You adjust because of personnel, but you also adjust because of scheme. How does that change? How, how do you change now with those adjustments, or do you keep it the same ahead of game five? No, I, you know, there, there's probably things that, you know, that we can tweak, um, you know, that have to do with lineups and who's playing, you know, their, their depth, um, you know, allows them to, to play some guys that you can still look at how they've played, you know, during the course of the series and, and see some things that you want to try to influence or take away. I think, you know, obviously PG has been terrific, particularly in certain segments of the game. 
where he's been able to to really attack the basket. Um, you know, we've tried to switch Rudy onto him late in certain possessions and have been able to, to do a pretty good job protecting the rim. Our half court defense um, during stretches has been very good. Um, transition has been the thing that if you look at the numbers, it's just, it's really hurt us. And, you know, some of that, you know, is connected to our offense and some of it's connected to, you know, us just being better getting back and, you know, not allowing, you know, driving lines. So, um, you know, there, there, there are things that, that, that we've, wanted and talked about doing and, and feel like we need to do that, that we see coming out of games, really games three and four, but particularly game four, um, you know, that don't involve Kawhi. Um, certainly things that obviously the, th the things that um, that you that you look at are no, you know, aren't relevant now with him playing, but there, there are some other things that um, whether it be points of emphasis for us in our group and things that we know we need to do. We saw, you know, the second half, um, the other night that, that we found a little something, we're just more aggressive, you know, and, and, and being more, more committed and, and, and reading quicker to try to get the ball into the paint to, to create. And then, you know, doing a better job once we get in there, being precise, you know, using fakes, making passes that we can shoot. Um, so some of those things that, that, you know, that impact um, our team and impact the game, particularly getting back, and then certainly, as, as I said, with with PG, you know, the, there's things that we need to take away and, and have taken away at certain points in the game. But, you know, he's he's a heck of a player and, and he's been able to do some things. And, you know, obviously that still remains the case. Alex Behar, Salt Lake Tribune. Coach, there's a there's a lot that's been made of kind of how the minutes that Derek favors gets has possibly uh, negatively impacted the team when he's been out there. How, how do you kind of make sure that those minutes are maximized when he is out there? Well, that you do just that, you know, I, I think fave, if you look, you know, against Memphis had a terrific series. Um, you know, I, I know that it's not, not lost on us and the, the minutes that fave is in, um, in this series, if there's things that we can do to help the team be more effective defensively in those situations, you know, those are adjustments that, that we'll make, um, you know, and then obviously as far as how we match certain players, you know, sometimes that's on the ball, sometimes that's off the ball. We, we've done that over the course of the season as far as we've played um, guys at various times in, in matchup situations and you know, I know this question came came up previously, and, and it's a good one. And you know, Rudy Rudy needs to keep himself out of foul trouble. We need to help him stay out of foul trouble um, because we are so dependent on him. And that that's you know not a criticism in any way of Derek. I, I think we, you know, we've been who we are because of the job that he's done during the year. Um, but again, there's there's things that that Rudy's capable of doing that you know that no one in the league is really doing and particularly become very important, you know, with our team. So um, to the extent we can keep him on the floor, particularly at certain times, you know, you, you get a chance to see the, the, the times that he can be um, the most impactful um, as far as how, you know, our lineups look out there. We've got some constraints, obviously, um, at the point guard position that, that come into play as far as matchups. So all those things kind of work together. And, um, you know, we won six playoff games in a row. And then you get into a situation where you're able to, you know, see, see other things more closely against a different team. And then, you know, obviously whatever those things are, whether it be small or large things that you can do to adjust as far as rotations or minutes or schemes, you know, those are things that all come into play. All right, we have time for one last question. Maria Vidal, Tab Deportes. Hi, coach. Hope you're well. You were oh. just mentioning that the Clippers is an aggressive team. So I was wondering, what do you think the key will be to limiting guys like, for example, PG? And how challenging would it be to guard them tonight? Well, I think you see, you know, PG's had a, a, there's a couple real clear tendencies when when you look at you know the last couple games in particular you know his ability to attack the rim and you know how he's doing that and who he's doing that against 
um, and then his ability to you know to shoot the three off the dribble, um, particularly in pick and roll where you know we need to be up at the point of the screen. We need to make that harder for him and be more aggressive to take some of those things away. Um, you know, and then really when you go back and you look at um, a lot of the, the the numbers, we've we've been you know with with Rudy on the floor been really good in, a, in half court and I, I think you know that's something that that they recognized you know in the first couple games and, and and really made a concerted effort to run um you know so to the extent that we can be more efficient offensively that that also will will really help help our defense being in half court situations and then you know a few things schematically that we need to do that um you know that, that that can can further help us and th those things may be individual or they may be more collective